Okay, another follow-up after the reference factory. Uh, I've already discussed the modification to the factory that sets up the uh, the launch silos so that we do one at a time and the first take on that was to eliminate the beacons entirely because I thought it would only take a couple more. Turned out it took uh, almost nine silos to sustain the firing rate. So then I thought, well, okay, let's let's go back from that group of ten silos that I built. Let's go back to two silos and put the the uh, circuitry in place. So this is basically the original design for the silos, plus the circuitry to make sure that each one fires in sequence. So we're essentially ping ponging. Uh, given that it's only two, there is probably a simpler solution than you know, waiting here and then waiting there. Uh, just to, to review quickly, uh, our token will delay uh, before the first slot. The first slot is going to be uh, wait, wait until the science is low. So as long as we have outbound science in our, uh, in our chest down here, he will be frozen. Once our science gets low, we'll flow through the first square into the second square. We'll wait in the second square until we have a uh, satellite. And we'll go into the third square where we will use this delay circuit that I set up. Uh, previous episode, I went over what that looked like. Basically, it is a pair of combinators that influence a count up until limit and then stops at the limit. So when P is e when P is equal to one here, we have an up counter, and when T as long as T is less than Z, we continue to increment the up counter, and when T gets to Z, it stops counting up. This is all gated on the signal here, so that when there's something in there, we count up, and then gated back in we have the condition on the belt <clears throat> which says the belt moves if it's empty or if the counter is less than maximum. So when the counter gets to maximum uh, it's frozen if you know, it, it's enabled if the belt is empty or if the counter is maximum. So when we get in there we freeze it, count up, and we get to the limit and it's released. So we stay in there while we're in here which is going to be for 300 updates or five seconds uh, we'll have a launch signal when that's done we proceed over here where we wait for a fixed amount of time uh, it would be better if I was going to redesign this I may someday um, when we go into here for the launch ready uh, if we wait there until we start seeing science flow out of the silo and then we have another one where we wait until we see the science stop flowing out. So that way, if we truly weren't ready to go, then we would So This particular design, uh, if we trigger it to fire and the rocket isn't built yet, uh, we will lock up. We'll end up uh, waiting for science when there is no science. Um, wait, is that true? Or did I fix that? I may have fixed that. Uh, yeah, the only place is conditional on science is here, so I did fix that. Now if we trigger this guy to, to to go and he's not ready, then we will wait his time and we'll come up here and we'll trigger him to go. So so if you're not ready, basically we skip a launch and we're not going to give up our launch pace, but you know if you're not ready to go, then we're not going to keep up the launch pace anyway. So let's take a look at that what that looks like in practice. Let's get our token here. I'm going to drop it on the right so our right rocket is going to go first. You know, here I've got a I've got a light that says we are waiting to launch and it's going to wait there until the stock gets down below 2000. So let's Oh, before we get too far here, let's make sure we are showing something interesting. Let's look at our science output rates here. 
and for consumption let's look at what is being used to build the rocket. That will be rocket control units and rocket fuel uh, production. We're also going to want to look at uh, how about the rockets themselves, where's my rocket parts? Here they are. <clears throat> um, actually over here, let's not look at the science, let's just look at the rocket parts. And where'd the last one go? Uh, oh, LDS is right. Okay, so we're all set up here. Let's start some research going. As usual, the follower robot counts, so we're chewing up all of our kinds of science. Now, this design differs from the others a little bit. Uh, previously, I was taking all the science out of the silos and it all got merged together and the actual stockpile was over here. I kept trying to think, how can I get the science out of the silos into the stockpiles faster? And it turns out that, just do the obvious, put them here. Okay, so they're really much. So now we're getting the science in literally as fast as possible. Our threshold is low enough so that even if all the science remaining was in one box, we'd have no problem. We'd still be able to, to uh, use all four outputs. So we didn't watch the stuff up top. Let's watch this one. So now we are waiting for our threshold to go down. When that crosses 2,000, this is going to flip through these first two very quickly. So you see blips on these two LEDs, and then we'll be here for launching. There we did. That hardly even touched. It launches. There we go. Now with two silos, we should reach steady state very quickly. Just for reference, our science production is going to be this nice square wave, and we can turn that on later and verify. So we launched one rocket, and we immediately ramped up production of our rocket parts. And it's always a little bit ragged. We launch a second rocket, and now the second silo is building rocket parts. And very shortly, our first silo, well, this silo here, he completes. So we've got a two minute cycle. And of that, each silo spends 40 seconds minimum doing animations. So I trimmed down the number of beacons here. If I take one more off, then we can't quite keep up. And if I put one more on, what happens is we have a high plateau that's a little bit longer. Is that right? I forget which way it goes. Anyway, so we've got this, this pattern here where for a brief time both are producing and then one of them is complete. I'm not sure why it ramps up and down like that. Now at the one hour time horizon, it should be fairly smooth. Let's move away from the 
rocket launch to get rid of the noise. And a quick speed test. <clears throat> This is running about, well, it looks like it's pretty variable. Um, 240 updates per second right now. Uh, that tends to go up and down. I wish I could stripe that out somewhere on a graph. Uh, a lot of the, the plots here, the power plots and productivity plots and so on, are things that I'd really like to just put out on a, on a time series somewhere and plot them. Let's see, we're running anywhere from 240 to 260 updates per second. And the the zoom I have this set for is Control F9, which is kind of a, a nice fixed camera. I think our updates per second here are based on uh, where we are in the launch cycle because it, it pulses back and forth we get one launch and the other launch they go back and forth and it's not a constant drain on the incoming materials it's not a constant build rate uh, if we wanted a constant build rate what we'd have to arrange for is uh, the moment each silo finished building was the moment where another silo starts building so we'd have to do something like that. And that's tweaking at a level that I don't think we have control over. And there's always the problem that uh, production of the satellites themselves is a very, uh, very bursty affair. You know, so it bursts one out. And then when it's done, it, it sends it off and it's quiet again for a bit. And before I wrap up this very short recording, a quick check to make sure we don't have any trains that are just sitting in a station somewhere or a bunch of trains bottlenecking up or anything like that. And we do have some trains that are supposed to sit in stations down here. Those look good. Up here, these guys uh, do take a moment to get unloaded. I think my logic on these warehouses is not right. Um, I think we're ending up in situations where a train is stuck in the station because one of its wagons can't unload. And I think the way to solve that is to have a very, very large uh, uh, merge balancer after the train. Now this is this would be a 32 to 32 merge if we wanted to do all of the belts here. But that would mean that each one of these stations could pull equally from all cars, which would, would um, solve our, our problem of trains sitting in the warehouse stations. Now, it's not a big problem, it's just you know, it means I can't see if something is going wrong if there's a train that's supposed to sit there. Anyway, so there's the there's the final ping pong solution to the mostly leveling out of the, of the stress on the factory due to the rocket launches. Yeah, when I get in close to this, notice my UPS goes down. We got all sorts of stuff going on here. So I think that's it for this quick um, review of what's going on with the rockets. I've got to go ahead and upload this and get started on my next little project.